Today we're going to be talking about taking spore prints from mushrooms, which is a really essential skill set to learn. Uh, whether you just want to get into identification, often we are able to tell one species to the next and the spore print is one of the main ID features. It's actually easier to tell by the spore than it is by the, the looks and the physical features of it. And it becomes even more essential if you want to get into foraging or if you want to get into growing mushrooms outdoors. Uh, because again, foraging, that might be one of your main features to ensure that you have an edible mushroom, not a poisonous one. And if you're growing outdoors, there's always the possibility that you're going to have imposter mushrooms, meaning a different species that starts growing on the outdoor medium that you were growing on. And if you're not 100% certain of your ID, uh, taking a spore print might be one of the ways that you do it. It's also just a super fun activity to do uh, and a cool one to do with kids. Now, of course, the spores are like the uh, fruiting mechanism, kind of like the seed. They're not actually a seed, but they're kind of like the seed of the mushroom, right? So you want to start by harvesting mushrooms that are at the end of their life cycle. So this shiitake right here, you can see it's totally fanned out sideways, like opened up, uh, and the edges have started to unfurl upwards. And the same with these wine cap mushrooms here with those beautiful purple gills. The reason for this is because it's at the end of the mushroom's life cycle that it begins to release its spores. So there's a couple of things we're going to do, and we're going to do two different techniques. So I have a Pyrex glass sheet, and I've got a couple containers here that are going to go over top of the mushrooms. So in this one, we're actually going to collect the spores right onto the glass. Another way to do it is to collect it on paper. So I have some plates and I've got some bowls to go over top and a sheet of paper on top of the plate. The reason for the bowl is basically we don't want a breeze or wind to come and blow those spores away. So we're going to cover the mushroom with this so that the spores actually drop right onto the paper. A third way you can do this is actually to do it onto tin foil. And one of the reasons that people often use tin foil is one, it's easy to sanitize it. You could spray it down with peroxide or rubbing alcohol to make sure it's absolutely clean. And then if you want to actually try and grow um, a new batch of mushrooms and colonate another uh, substrate right from spore, then you can actually save that spore and use it to grow more mushrooms. But that's a much more advanced technique. I'm going to grab my knife here. And I'm not super worried about sanitation right now because I'm not planning to save these spores um, to try and inoculate anything else. We're just doing it for ID features and just for fun and interest. So I'm going to start by cutting the mushroom right at the, the base there. So I'm basically cutting the stem away from the cap there. And then I'm going to take this and I'm going to flip it upside down on the piece of paper. And then I'm going to throw the bowl over top. I'm going to do another one now with the shiitake mushroom. And let's see, I want a little bit of a smaller one. So again, I'm going to cut the, the stem off there. And I'm going to go to the Pyrex glass. I'm going to put it down there, set that underneath. Then I'm going to let these sit for about 6 to 12 hours in a place that's not super windy or breezy. And if I caught these at the right time, the spore should drop on. And I should be able to look at the difference now between the shiitake spore and the wine cap spore, which is a fun little experiment to be able to do. Let's chat about one opportunity for you to go much deeper in building your relationship with this amazing organism that we share this planet with. I have a phenomenal course that I'm really proud of. I put a lot of work into it and it's called The Mushroom Course. And in the course, we teach you multiple different techniques for growing mushrooms at home, uh, whether you live in a small urban apartment or whether you live on a, a northern homestead with a ton of land. We get into a ton of different techniques and we also get into mushroom ecology and how to identify wild mushrooms. Uh, we have this thing called the virtual mushroom walk uh, where we literally go around and we tour and give you the main ID features and talk about the habitat of all these species. So if you enjoyed today's video on taking spore prints and you want to go deeper on your journey then I invite you to go to themushroomcourse.com again themushroomcourse.com and consider joining up with the, our mushroom class there to have myself and my wife Laura and our team of uh, mentors to guide you in deepening your relationship with the uh, fungi realm and your knowledge of mushrooms. So a little less than a day has gone by. I basically just left these spores to release overnight. To be honest, I probably could have checked them yesterday evening and they probably would have been ready. They start dropping spores, you know, depending on where the mushroom's at in its life cycle. Uh, if it's ready to spore, the chances are they're going to start dropping them almost as soon as you put it down on the paper. So I left these longer than we actually needed. So let's take a look and see what results we got. Now the first one here, the wine cap really stands out. And this is what we're looking for from an ID perspective and a safety perspective if you're growing wine caps outdoors. We got this nice dark purple, almost black spore print on there. Uh, you can see up in the top there, you can actually see the gills in there. It actually makes a really cool design. And there's other parts of it that have gone completely dark. If I had actually taken this off earlier, you can actually get a really beautiful impression of the mushroom where you literally just see the gill patterns all the way around. And it's actually almost artistic. Uh, one of the reasons this is such a fun activity 
something to do with kids or integrate into artwork and, and cool science and learning projects. Uh, but the main thing from an ID perspective that I care about here is the fact that I got those dark spores. And now it's dried on this piece of paper. So I can actually label it, you know, put this in a piece of plastic or into a binder and store it. Uh, and I could collect spore prints from a bunch of different mushrooms uh, as part of my kind of record and database and my learning journey over time. I wanted to show you here because I actually, when I pulled the piece of paper out, I put the mushroom back down again, the wine cap, and it's still releasing spores. And you can actually see on the bottom of the plate there, uh, it's making this more of the spore print there again. And we'll do one more of the wine cap right here. If you look at this one, again, you can see those really beautiful dark spores on the bottom of our glass dish there. So that one was definitely a success. Now the shiitake mushroom looks a little bit different because the shiitake mushroom actually releases a light or almost a whitish spore. Now on the glass plate here, it really stands out. So if I pull this one out, you don't see much of a pattern, but you see that milky white color from it. And again, when, if we are really focusing on ID features, um, you want to know if there's a mushroom you're harvesting, are there any toxic lookalikes? And if they do, what are the spore colors? If the spore colors are the same colors as the edible one, then that's not something you're using for ID. In the case of the wine cap though, where for example, one of the mushrooms we might get it mixed up is with the Amanita family, which are deadly poisonous, seeing that black or purple spore is very helpful as just one of our ID pieces. And I always like to have multiple different pieces of evidence supporting the case towards my ID. So we're looking at, you know, the stem, the shape, the habitat, the spore color, and all of those are leading us towards our hypothesis of the actual identification. But that's pretty cool seeing the white and black spores side by side there. Now we'll look at the paper one. This one does not stand out nearly as much because it is the white spores dropping on the paper, but you can at least make out that it's that kind of milky white spore on there. Another option, if you knew the color of the spore was supposed to be white and you're collecting this for art, you could do it with a piece of black paper where the white would stand out better. Or if you don't know, you could always do two and put one on black paper and one on white paper. And that way, either way, you know you're gonna see it. So the last experiment that I'm going to do here today, um, maybe I'll just do it inside of the bowl here. Uh, we went out and picked out some beautiful fresh chanterelle mushrooms uh, just this morning. So I'm going to take a support print of the chanterelle mushroom. So again, I'm just going to take it. Ah, maybe I'll do it even in the bowl here. Throw that down in the bottom of my bowl, my piece of paper. I'm going to lay it with the gill side down and then I'm going to throw a cover over top of it and we'll let that sit for six hours or so. Um, and then we'll come back and see what the chanterelle ones look like as well. So I hope you're excited to go out and collect some mushrooms uh, and take some spore prints. Even if you don't know what they are, it's a really fun activity to learn how to do. You can integrate into art, you can do it with a kid's project, and it can be part of your ID skill set and your safety skill set when you get into growing mushrooms or maybe further on down your journey if you start to forage them. So you can probably guess what your homework assignment is coming out of this. Go and harvest a couple mushrooms out in the woods bring them back and take a spore print uh, and see what you learn. See if you can use that for the identification, see what color it is, uh, see what kind of pattern it leaves. Uh, really, really fun activity that just builds our relationship with this amazing species.